I believe that money is a good thing, and as long as people don't use it to serve the ego, they should have it in their life in abundance, because you can do great things. Money equals options, and I believe the history of spiritual people having trouble manifesting money relates to concepts such as a rich man can't enter the uh, the gates of heaven any more than a camel through the eye of the needle and that kind of thing like that. Well, I don't believe that's true at all. In fact, many kinds of uh, religious proverbs are meant to keep people pacified in their squalor so they will not complain and just wait around to die so they can go to heaven. And I don't believe in a traditional heaven or hell concept anyways, but I don't think having more money would prevent one from going. I think at best it can work as a metaphor in terms of hoarding and not sharing, but I do believe that saving is different than hoarding, because if you save enough money to get yourself out of root chakra and eventually um, work towards the goal of being able to live off the interest and so forth, you can do a lot of great things. Uh, a few months ago, I was guided to begin giving a certain percentage of my income to charity, to the World Food, World Food Program in particular, and in the last three months I've uh, donated over $3,000 to them and will continue to probably donate a thousand a month or so. And this feels good to be able to help in that way. Um, a lot of it has gone, I think maybe all of the money I've donated so far has gone to Haiti in the relief efforts there. And I believe that even though there was a part of me that thought, well, you know, I can reach my own uh, goals faster if I don't, I just felt like it was hard to ignore the suffering of others. <sighs> because if it was happening in my neighborhood, I couldn't ignore it and we are all interconnected. And I think a lot of spiritual people have the desire to help others, but they don't have the means to do so because they haven't figured out how to help themselves. So what I've found is that you can work for another person and you know, kind of work your way up through the ranks by using these principles that I'm going to share. But I believe that if you want to expedite your process, even if it's while you're continuing to work a traditional job, do some kind of self-employment thing because if you have your own business you can really test out these principles and use it as a barometer, a barometer of how you are putting into practice ideas that manifest abundance because it can come to you or not come to you based on your actions as opposed to a set salary. I was intimidated at first um, being self-employed because I thought taxes would be really confusing and hard, but it's not at all. It's really just another few pages and really simple uh, to fill out Schedule C and a Schedule SE for self-employment, whatever, <laughs> you know, 8829. It's, it's not that tough at all, so you can easily figure it out. I figured it out on my own without any kind of, you know, tax advice guru or anything, just by looking in the, looking in the forms. So, don't let that intimidate you. If there's something that you offer or can do as a service or you know, product that you can create or whatever that you feel has value, then just begin and see what happens when you're practicing spiritual principles. You're receiving guidance all the time, and so it's just a matter of opening up and following it. And your ego will arise and tell you to be lazy and tell you to do the things that you already you know, are used to doing or distract yourself or uh, play with addictive behaviors or whatever, but if you overcome your tendencies towards self, uh, self-destruction, then you can just uh, redirect your energies towards the guidance that you're receiving. And a lot of times, if you're establishing a business, it's boring stuff, but it doesn't have to be boring with the right attitude. You can just put on some music and do your thing and know that you're being guided towards greater abundance and that your energy will be, you know, come back to you. Because that's the thing, if you're working for someone else, you can work really hard and perhaps you're appreciated, but perhaps you're stuck. 
perhaps there's no openings beyond your opening that will lead to abundance. And so all that extra energy is not reinforced. But when you work for yourself, it is. So by focusing on little details and following through with the guidance that you receive, you know, that's the biggest thing for me. What delayed my success was not a lack of guidance, but a lack of implementing the guidance that I was receiving because I was lazy. I didn't want to put these ideas into form because I thought it would be dull and I didn't need it. And, um, you know, you can reach a certain level where you're basically taking care of yourself, but maybe you're supposed to receive greater abundance than just getting by. And you could say, well, I don't really need any more, but maybe you can do greater good if you do make more. And so continue to follow your abundance, uh, follow your guidance, that is. And when you start to achieve abundance, one of the principles that can uh, keep it coming, I believe, is to not squander it on things that you don't need or do things for your ego. Like, I could have a very nice house and a very nice car, but I live modestly because by doing the spiritual work that I do, I realize that these other things are not going to be that rewarding for that long. And so throwing away money is communication to the universe that you don't really value it. So saving and uh, uh, living not in, you know, a really uh, self-defeating kind of way, you know, but but finding balance with money, where you have the things that you're guided to get. It's it's no longer about what is advertised to you, what is you know going to make you more of something or whatever. It's just what are you guided to buy? Buy that. Don't buy anything that doesn't come from your guidance, and then you're, you'll keep your money around.